So you talked about inconsistency being a bit frustrating sometimes. Yes. Yeah. You so your high school. I reach to a stage sometimes I give up. I stop playing and go yeah. and watch a movie or. Well, that's actually a good way of dealing with it. And go and have a walk. Go to a supermarket, a small supermarket next to our house. Yeah. Buy some chocolate. Yeah, <laughs> to make yourself yeah. feel better. <laughs> to feel better. The buy some chocolate method to reducing snooker frustration. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> that's actually a... That's or return a, phone calls, call write email. emails. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do something completely different. I mean, um, so this, this took me, in my own game, years to get comfortable with the dips in performance. And then also to reduce the dips in performance that comes second. Yeah. Also, I, I uh, we teach this in flying. Uh, you reduce the workload. Yeah. By changing your task or mission. So what what do you mean by that? So uh, you feel you are overloaded. Yeah. You have a lot of workload at some stage. <coughs> yeah. You change mission. Uh, your your mission. Just jotting some notes down here. For, okay. Yeah. You change mission or task. To change your mental state? Yeah, so you, you start doing something else and come back to the original problem. And what's the purpose of that? Uh, you come back to it, you approach it differently. Yeah. You will have a clear mind, you start yeah. from scratch yeah, yeah. sometime. Yeah. And you, you have a better chance of, of overcoming it or solving it. Yeah, so it was really interesting when I watched you say, sometimes I get so frustrated I just give up or feel like quitting, and, and, and then you said sometimes I do, and I go and do something different, and I, I'm looking at it thinking that's actually a, a very, that is exactly what I'd recommend to somebody. So if you've taken that from your piloting work. I uh, try, a, I try, but a, sometimes, you know, you want to come back, you never have a chance, you know. You have a snooker, somebody's a snooker. Well, well yeah, of some, course, obviously. Or somebody, you know, a safe, or, <coughs> Not much left of the reds, you can yeah. come back to the game. Yeah, and, and sometimes your standard can be the same, but from in seven days in a row, one day you'll make 750s, the other day you'll make 420s, because the balls are close, Yeah, yes. and your opponent's playing well. So it's part of our inconsistency is actually the dynamic part of the game. So inconsistency brackets in. We what we want is consistency. So let's think in terms of what we want. So firstly, you've got to, the prerequisites to consistency are uh, uh, how the cookie crumbles, how the balls fall. Yeah? Where the balls land. Then it's opponent skill. And then it may be something simply like humidity in the air, which makes it physically difficult to move the cue. Yeah. And environment. Yeah, environment. Air yeah. conditioning. Yeah, yeah. So these also have an effect before. So these are huge variables. Before our own performance starts changing physically or mentally. So we've got physical. We've then got physical or mental reasons for being inconsistent. Now, if we just turn the page for a second. <clears throat> so this would be a beginner, an amateur, and a professional, okay? So the beginner, they will, this is their average standard, their mean standard. But their, their worst will be down here and their best will be up here. So the, the cadence is very frequent and very high. The frequency okay. of their standard varies greatly and it changes quickly. So from day to day, so somebody, somebody comes in, somebody called me this week and said, well, you know, one day I can play fantastic, the next day I can't pot a ball. So that's not an uncommon, that's not an uncommon experience for players. And actually, what I tend to see, 
and I had this in my game, players tend to think it's all about them. I'm the only player in the world who experiences this. It's so unfair. I'm so rubbish. The guy down in the club who doesn't know anything about playing snooker just gets down and pots balls. Doesn't know anything about technique or work. He just naturally plays the game. It's okay. so unfair. He never seems to miss. And then we're struggling around trying to work on our cue action and everything and can't do it. That's, uh, that's so frustrating to us. Uh, and... But it's, but it's part of, I lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, so, so the, the cadence of our standard changes quite frequently. But as we improve, our knowledge gets better, or rather as our knowledge gets better, we improve. So then our, our range is less and the frequency of change is less as well. Less as well. And then as you get to a professional level, you know, it's more like this. So it's a very small range. And, and of course, as your knowledge improves, your average standard also gets better. So, so how, so how do we get up here? Yeah, how do we do that? What do you think? Practice. Yeah, but proper practice, like proper. we were saying earlier, it's proper practice. Good practice. Let's say planned practice. Yeah. Proper planned practice. What else? Discipline. Uh, yes. When? Discipline when? Well, all the way. You program, you schedule. Absolutely. Timing. Schedule, program. Sleeping pattern. Practice. Yeah, that's for a more professional level, all that type of outside stuff. On a game level, though, it's queuing, your yeah. rhythm, shot routine. Look at John Higgins, four cue actions on every shot. Last night, Anthony Hamilton, we were watching four, three, four cue actions on every shot. Most club players are doing one or two cue actions. Okay. Top professionals are not good enough to play snooker with one or two cue actions. So, unless you're doing that and doing your pre-shot routine and post-shot routine, staying in position after the shot for your self-diagnosis, you're not going to improve. It would just be guesswork. Neither do you deserve to improve either. The myths of eye preference, eye strength and eye dominance. This is one of my favourite subjects because it's mis-explained so often. 